Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. In today's video, we are going to use the M2 MacBook Air to, well, paint a bigger picture of the tech space. Well, that's at least my intention after I just completely gave up reviewing this computer because I don't want to. And to be honest, I don't want to review a lot of things. So really this video is just me, Sarah Peachy, hey, how are ya? Breaking down, having a complete and utter breakdown before your eyes. And you know what? Watching some of the footage back, it got just a little bit too unhinged. This video went off the rails. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I want to make a video about how Windows 11 is still like kind of bad, like pretty bad guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was good. Is this even a YouTube video anymore? Am I just like talking to myself at this point? So future Sarah with a haircut and everything will be coming back to narrate some things. Okay, so if you're genuinely curious about my thoughts about the M2 MacBook Air, and if you should buy one, well, let's just start there. Let's start at a productive place. Okay. Now I'm not gonna go into all of the like weird controversy that is around the M2 MacBook Air, but the one that stands out that is 100% legitimate is the SSD. Okay, so if you're going to buy the M2 MacBook Air and any type of content creation is important to you, do not get the 256 base model. Bump up your SSD to at least 512 because in my testing, when I was transferring 50 gigs of 4K footage onto the 256 SSD, it went three times as slow as the 512 SSD. That 50 gigs of 4K footage transferred in nine minutes on the 256 gig model and only three minutes on the 512 gig model, which is pretty significant, I would say. But other than that, like I use the proper base model 256 for like an entire week doing like admin stuff, very light content creation. And it did great. The only things I guess I would flag besides the SSD is well, the M2 uh, webcam, that 1080 webcam is so much better than the 720 webcam from the M1 MacBook Air. It's, it's good. If you're doing video calls every single day, I would say the $200 bump to the M2 is worth it. I found the battery life in between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air to be very, very similar. I know a lot of people have been saying that the M2 is better. Uh, I didn't exactly find that, but they kind of balance out, right? The M2 is more efficient, but it's a bigger screen, a little bit more bright, so they balance out. And really the real winner of the M2 MacBook Air as well the M1 MacBook Air because hey you can get this guy for only $9.99 now and the biggest thing with these devices are not only just thin and portable but the battery life is amazing uh, the battery life of like an M1 Pro or an M1 Max it cannot touch the battery life of the MacBook Airs and it's still great on the M2 still great on the M1 and so when you think about getting a MacBook Air the M1 or M2 at the center of it is one super Super quiet, fanless, not gonna be an issue. Everyday tasks like browsing the web, like content creation, spreadsheets, Zoom calls, forget about it, it's gonna do great. And battery life, battery life, battery life. This is the only computer that I can truly leave the charger at home, not even have to charge at night, use for a second time the next day and be fine. And that is literally where my thoughts on the MacBook Air stop. Sometimes with reviews, I think that, hey, if I use it for a longer amount of time, I'm gonna have these earth shattering insights. Ooh, the MacBook Air is getting some drama, the SSD and the cooling and, oh, shocker, it's not the best laptop that you can get ever. Oh, wow, the super thin, more affordable MacBook isn't the end all be all of performance, I mean, Duh, right? And I'm like, yeah, I don't have anything more interesting to say. This is fine. This is going to be fine for most people. <laughs> you guys usually only see this side of my office here. It actually looks very nice with 
with natural light. But this is what you're used to seeing and honestly, I really only use this side of my office. Maybe we should go over here just to say what's up. This is the bigger side too. Like what am I doing with my life? Look how nice the, you know, I just, uh, yeah. Let's post up here. No, that looks terrible. That's fine, right? I used to shoot all of my videos only with natural light. And the past few years, I've only done studio lighting and I'm so used to having control. So it's kind of throwing me for a loop, shooting something without, without a light, just cause. Why not? Okay, so these feelings I'm having aren't just completely random. The world has been kind of weird the past couple of years, right? We had COVID. All of a sudden people were stuck at home. Everyone is upgrading their desk setup, upgrading their tech. They're getting STEMI checks. And in a span of a year, it seems like literally everyone is looking up what is the best computer? What is the best iPad to get? I had a normal iPad review that like I normally do, get a million views in 2020. Like that does, that's not super normal for me. That's about like eight or nine times more views than I normally get on an iPad video. And you know, that was fine for me because hey, I just kept chugging along. I had been doing reviews for a while. You get some views and you get some views and tech and woo and companies sending out product and everything is so exciting. Um, and then recently this past year, it, it seems like tech YouTube as a whole has kind of well lost a little bit of steam. You're always going to have people like Linus Tech Tips, Marquez just crushing and the game because while well, they have amazing teams they do this like it's their proper job and they are so good at it they do this like it's their proper job like youtube is my job but i'm just a little bit more of a mess so i uh can't stick to one thing for very long. So you have those people at the top that are just crushing it. And then you have a lot of new people coming up from the bottom crushing it as well, because hey, new perspectives, new uh, visually interesting ways of presenting tech. I love it. And then at the heart of it, it's kind of like from the audience member perspective, like how many videos of one product are you actually going to watch? In 2020, it seemed like everyone was watching like 20 videos about the new iPad Pro or the new iPad Air, but now everyone has their hardware and they're good. It's more like, well, hey, like what should I actually do with this thing, right? So, you know, you feel pressure from that area, like, oh, this isn't getting as many views as normal, interesting. Oh, also these videos, I actually don't like really making anymore. They kind of bore me because, well, tech has gotten pretty good. You can only say so many things about a computer, a phone. And what's so weird about this crisis that I've personally been having is it's not like in the past I've been this pro reviewer anyways. Like my phone reviews are basically glorified camera tests where I'm just running and gunning with the phone, right? I mean, those, those are fun to me. And my crazy stint of laptop reviews for a solid, I guess, two or three years, I don't think I ever put like one benchmark in one of those videos. It's really just like, oh, hey, how does this handle for a creator? or programmers, etc. And those definitely had their time and place. So it is really weird that internally I put this pressure on me being a tech reviewer. Maybe it's because like my peers are that and it's all that I follow and you know a lot of times watch and so I feel I put that pressure on me for some reason. I don't know because I feel like you guys don't do it that much. Sarah is this really weird dramatic monologue just about you asking your audience if it's okay that you don't review products that you don't actually use in your day to day? Yes. but what does this all mean? Well, I'm still trying to figure that out, but I have an idea. But before we get to that, one thing that Sarah from last week did a great job with was telling you guys about Squarespace, our sponsor. Squarespace is the perfect all-in-one platform to build a beautiful website, whether you want it to show off your online portfolio or to sell things online, whether it's services or physical goods. There are so many amazing integrations to make selling things online with Squarespace easier. Integrations with ShipStation, and if you're selling something like your time, maybe you're a hairstylist and you want your own website to schedule appointments, Squarespace also has amazing scheduling tools that I have personally used with the website Book Blanco. It's a photo video creative space that people can rent. All they have to do is just go to the website, and Squarespace handles all of the back end so I don't have to worry about it. Squarespace also offers amazing SEO tools where when people search you, well, they will find you. That sounded almost like a threat. That sounded 
of intimidating. And hey, email campaigns. You can run email campaigns straight from your website. It is super easy. That is what I now do. So hey, if you're anything like me, you got a lot of cool creative ideas in your brain and you wanna see them out into the world and Squarespace can help you do that. Well, hey guys, if you wanna check out Squarespace, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you wanna get started today, go to squarespace.com slash Saradici, that's me, for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. So, Sarah, let's wrap this stuff up. What does it all mean? Yeah, I'm still figuring that out. But the good thing is this summer, I experimented a lot. Some things didn't work. I tried to be like Austin Evans Mystery Tech. I did one of those videos. It did terrible. It's now unlisted. I'll maybe put it down in the description if you wanna check it out. Ooh, secret video that only like 15,000 people watch. And those moments were painful. I don't know if you know the inside baseball about YouTube, but every time you post a video, it gets ranked against your other videos. So if it's 10 out of 10, that means, wow, your video is performing the worst. Compared to your previous 10 videos, this video did the absolute worst and you should just quit and give up and jump off a cliff. That's kind of what goes through your brain when that happens. And I had more of those than I would have wished this summer because I was trying to experiment. But something beautiful happened on the other side of that. On the other side of unlisting a lot of videos and thinking to myself, what am I even doing? You should just go make maybe wedding videos or something again, something happened. I had a few videos that I was proud of, that I worked hard on, that were fun to make, but still challenging to make. Uh, Cause you know, like easy doesn't equal good. Actually it would, if I could figure out something that is easy and also fulfilling, that also does well, that would actually be great. But for me, I need something to be challenging for it to be fulfilling at this point in my life. Anyways, so I had some of those videos that did well. So that was the Blender video, learning blender in 24 hours when I can learn something new and creative that is awesome and then I get to share it with you and then you guys watched it It has over like 200,000 views that's amazing and then another one that maybe I didn't spend as much time on filming and editing but I spent on the more of the writing side was that Johnny Ive video that I made and that did really well so I'm kind of in a really cool position where after a few months of experimenting I do have some like cookie crumbs of things that kind of do well, they're kind of fulfilling, and you know what, it kind of fits in what I've been talking about. It's like, okay, that Blender video, interesting. It's about a program, it's about something that people can do with the computers that they have, right? Blender is a free program, and I think that video was super encouraging for people to just start and to get creative, and it doesn't require like a $2,000 purchase of like a MacBook Air, right? And the Johnny Ive video was almost kind of just like, I don't know, tech commentary, researchy, I don't know exactly what that was, uh, but it was fun to make and I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. So saying all of that, I think that's kind of like a good North Star for me and for you as the audience. If you like that, if that interests you, well, hey, you can stick around. You can like, you can subscribe. I think I might be posting less videos, but the videos that I post, I'm hoping like every single person in my audience, hi, how are you, peachy fam? Thank you for being here. Every single video I hope appeals to you. It won't be like, oh, I'm not into this review, so I'm just not gonna watch the video. Um, I'm kind of hoping to keep every single one of you in mind, and with each video that I post, I'm hoping that you can learn something from it, right? Or be inspired, or just have fun. Just have fun, I, you know, let's have some fun again. That's why I had to refilm some of this, because previous Sarah, it, it was just, it's getting kind of dark. I'm on the other side now. Things are fine. Things are good, guys. <laughs> yeah, see, this is gonna be good for me because I'm also admitting, Sarah, you don't have to do 10 things at once because then none of the things that you're doing turn out to be good, right? Like, what would it look like if I just focus on trying to make that like Leica documentary again? Like, I, I feel like I could do that. It might take some time, but I could do it. And guys, I'm launching like my own brand soon of desktop accessories. I haven't talked about it a lot, but we officially have a launch date and it's like right around the corner. It's like this month. I'll put the email list down in the description below um, if you wanna be the first to learn about it. But it's been really cool to just work on something that feels like it's mine and I'm making something in the physical world that will like help people. Like that has been so cool, but that requires time. 
right? Um, requires time outside of videos. And so I think I need to be okay with taking that time if that makes sense. A lot of people live their life with just having like one job and just doing that job and trying to do that job well. Like I wanna know what that's like. I haven't been bored, like what is it like to have the feeling of boredom. Because I think that is where I had a lot of cool creative stuff happen in the beginning of my career when I was bored out of my mind in college and I hated everything. Man, that's where I had a lot of breakthroughs. Let's be bored again. Let's have fun again. Let's make videos what I wanna make videos about. All right guys, like, sub, there's people outside the window watching me film. I'm just now becoming aware of that. That is awful, oh my God. I am so embarrassed, kill me. Okay, bye guys, stay peachy. <laughs> okay, something that I'm just realizing too, I literally bought two M2 MacBook Airs and a brand spanking new M1 MacBook Air because I was gonna do like all these comparison videos and the reviews and I just miserably failed. But now I have like $3,000 worth of computers before me that I'm just not gonna use. If you wanna get one of these very new MacBooks that have only been used for like one or two weeks, check out the description below. I'll put my eBay link down there.